What's up, everybody? Brothers, sisters, psychonauts, and seekers of truth. It is Ananka, and welcome to my bazaar. Um, first off, I really just want to thank you guys for all, all the good comments and support you've given me on my last video where I did my personal salvia trip report. I, uh... I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I've always, you know, I've always been kind of apprehensive about actually showing myself and uh, my personal trip reports. But, you know, I mean, you guys showed a lot of support, so I really do appreciate it. So here I'm with my cat, Gerald. She's going to be the trip sitter for this one. But um, I wanted to share with you. I shared this before, uh, but I took it down. And I figure now, since since I'm doing, you know, real story time face cam videos, that I should share it again. But this is actually, and this 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 is the most horrifying nightmare bad trip I've ever had. And this is why I really try to tell people I'm like, as amazing as psychedelics can be, as amazing as dissociatives and drugs, like they can really open your mind. They can open your mind to heaven and light and truth and God, but they can just as equally shatter it and send you to realms of, like, I mean, physical pain is one thing, but mental pain, when you go through extreme depression or psychosis or you don't even know who you are or how to hold on to reality, that's a whole different level. I would never wish that on my worst enemy. So um, I'm going to tell you about my worst LSD trip, uh, how I jumped, you know, if you've ever heard the, <laughs> you know, like the 1960s, like uh, drug propaganda, like this is your brain, this is your brain on acid. If you take acid, you'll jump through a window. I actually did jump through a window and I like, so I'm that guy. I'm literally that guy. But this is why I really, um, I really try to put out this content so that you guys can have be aware and, and be safe take it slow and steady because I remember back when I first started I was just going crazy man I would just do all the shit I I would I'd be snorting like five grams of ecstasy and then I'd snort some Xanax and then we'd be smoking weed um we'd be going out like we'd be doing crazy shit bro I'm that's those are stories for another time trust me I got tons of stories <laughs> But uh, this time will just be my worst acid trip ever. And this is a precautionary tale. Like I said, it can always go good. But if you don't prepare yourself, if you're stupid like, like I was, it will go very bad. So uh, let me get to telling this story. Hold on, I'm going to just grab this bottle of wine. Gerald, stop eating the, stop eating the earbuds, Gerald. Oh, my God. Grab this bottle of wine to tell the story, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> Moscato. Recommend it. So, uh, this is another, another trip report that was in my junior year of high school. It might have been in the, it might have, nah, it was, yeah. It, it was in my junior year of high school. I was 17 years old, same year that I took the salvia trip report I told you guys about. I think the salvia trip was before this, but it really doesn't matter. So at this time, I had really been getting into acid. I had just started acid my sophomore year when I was like 15, 16 years old. Um, I want to say I had like probably 20 trips under my belt. And I'm just really, really starting to get into spirituality and philosophy and everything. So in my mind, you know, I'm like, oh, my God, I, I'm this enlightened Buddha. I'm the reincarnation of Terrence McKenna. Like all the, you know, I'm like, there, there's no way I could have a bad trip because that's what everyone thinks. But before you have a bad trip, everyone thinks like, oh, it'll never happen to me. And. Even, even with proper preparation, even in a good place, in a good setting, around good people, you can always have a bad trip. So never think that you're above a bad trip. And don't get me wrong, bad trips, are they are really the ones that you learn the most from. Because, you know, most trips, it's all sun, 
sunflowers and butterflies and rainbows and everything's beautiful and you get to see the mysteries of the universe but a bad trip shows you the shit that you don't want to see the shit that you don't want to deal with the shit that you've been holding in that's been eating at you from the inside it shows you hell and darkness and but that's what you need to see most in order to come to a full perspective of reality right yin and yang you know there's no light without darkness no darkness without light like young in the dark the dark uh night of the soul all these all these concepts so this was my this was my true dark night of the soul so it's me and my homie daniel um you know at this point me and him are really good friends we're best friends we do everything together we're like brothers so i and you know when it comes to psychedelics especially it's all about set and setting you want to be in a good comfortable place i personally after all my experiences i really like to trip alone and i know a lot of people say have a trip sitter and i mean to each his own don't get me wrong you know i don't want to give you guys any misinformation i'm saying personally for me tripping alone is much better for me personally but if you want to have a trip sitter and it makes you feel better you should do that but uh, make sure it's someone you really trust and you're really comfortable around and make sure they are stable of mind so, you know, it's me and my homie, me and my homie Daniel, we're, we're really good friends. We go meet up the homie, we get uh, two gel taps of acid each. These are dosed at like 100 UG or 200 UG. I mean, you never really know, the dealer can tell you it's whatever, but let's, let's assume they're 100 UG, because on average, every tab is dosed with one drop. So 100 micrograms. So we pick this up. We go to this house that I've never been to. First mistake. I've never... Gerald, stop scratching on the window. Sorry. We go to this house that I've never been to. It's like a three-story house. Like I said, first mistake. Setting a place I'm very unfamiliar with. It's with a bunch of people that I've never even met. It's like the homies, like cousins and brothers and friends. I don't, I don't even really know. Second mistake, you know, people that I don't know. So I'm in this unfamiliar place. I'm around a bunch of people I don't know. And so, you know, at first it's all cool. We're all cool. Um, we're just chilling. We're just smoking. We're smoking weed. We go up. We watch TV. Everyone takes two tabs, except for like, so there's like probably like eight or ten people in the house right now, but like two of them, probably like eight people, but like two of them are the only ones that don't take any acid. So we each take two tabs. You know, ge the general acid trip, the come up, you know, for me, I always get like, I always have to stretch out my muscles, get real tight and you feel the electricity going throughout your body, your eyes start fluttering and when you start entering into that realm, you feel your brain start voo, 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 when you start vibrating higher to get into that LSD space. So it's a good trip for honestly the first like five hours. It's a good we're just chatting, we're chatting. Me and Daniel lay on the floor. We're looking at his cousin. We we both had the same visual at the same time. We remember looking at her and her face transformed into this blue devil just like from the comic books. And we look at each other and we're like, whoa, we're like, did you see that? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, like the, the blue devil face. He's like, yeah. I'm like, we both saw the same, you know, they got the gloves with the lights on them. They're doing crazy fucking like rave shit, you know, light tracers all around our, our eyes and shit. You know, it's just, it's just a good, regular, wholesome, everyone's tripping balls and we're having a great time, right? regular LSD trip. I'm laughing nonstop. That's that's the thing with me, especially when I'm on acid. I just laugh nonstop, like for hours and hours, like a psycho, like, like a main, I'm literally just laughing and laughing. And so we finally, you know, we all, as the day goes on, we make our way down to the garage. At this point in the garage, it's just me, Daniel, and his cousin. Um, and this this is this is where the shit really gets real, like where where it becomes the bad trip. And a lot of this story, I don't 
personally remember, like now, now that it's been so many years, I'll have flashbacks and memories and I'll have dreams where I'll remember what happened. But a lot of this story had to be related to me because I, I didn't even remember what had happened. And that's, you know, that's another, that's like the, that's the scary thing, man. It's like with, with psychedelics and, you know, like if you take alcohol and you drink too much, you black out, right? Or if you take too much Xanax, you black out. But when it comes to psychedelics, you're not really supposed to like black out. You you know what I'm saying? But so we go to the garage. We're all sitting on the couch. I'm sitting right here. Daniel's sitting right there. And then his cousin's sitting in the chair. And all of a sudden, I remember doing this. Like, I just, like, we were all talking. We are all, just, and all of a sudden, I just went like this. I put my hand over my mouth, and I started shaking my finger. Started shaking my finger. And I don't, and they're looking at me. They're like, you know, and, and like I said, I've been, I've just been laughing and making jokes. So they're thinking, they're like, oh, this is just another one of Ananka's jokes. He's just, you know, he's just having fun. He's just having a trip. And I'm just, I want this. And they keep trying to talk and they keep looking at me and they're like, they're like, what? Like, are you good? So then I'd get up, I'd go lay down on the couch. I'd get up again. I'd trick my, I'd lay down on the couch. Or I'm going in, you know, this is where I, this is where I start to black out. This is where it starts. Like, I don't even remember. They say, I start getting up off the couch back and forth. Like, you know, you, you can tell like when someone's, when someone's going crazy, they got that crazy look in their eye. They said I had that psycho, like I just had that look in my eye, like I, like some something in my brain had broke. So I lay down on the couch, and they said I looked at Daniel, and I'm like Daniel, I'm gonna punch you in the face. And, and Dan, you know Daniel's like they, they're still not really. They're like, is he fucking around? Like they're not realizing that like, I'm not even like I'm not even there. Like it's. I, I know this sounds crazy if you've never experienced it. I know, you, what do you mean? Like, oh, you weren't there. But literally, like, it's like something else took control of my body. Because I, like, I, I also, I'll tell you later in the story. I remember having out-of-body experience and seeing things during this. But when they tell me that these things happen, it's like I, it's like I personally didn't do these things. Or maybe there was a psychotic break. Or maybe I was possessed by a demon. Whatever. Whatever your, whether you want to go a spiritual or a psychological view, we don't really know. And so they said that I looked at my friend Daniel and I'm like, Daniel, I'm going to punch you in the face. And you know, he looks at me, he's like, uh, he's like, uh, if it'll make you feel better. And they said, I just reached back as far as I could. And I just punched him in the face as hard as I could. And at that moment, they said, I just started screaming and freaking out, screaming it just raw or like, you know, just like, just like straight primal animal demon mode, just freaking out. And everyone in the house is on acid and they're all upstairs. So they all come running down to the garage. They all get me. They said that I was telling everyone, I'm like, I'm going to kill all of you. I'm going to murder your whole family. They said, I they're like, I'm going to wear your organs as chains. Like, they literally said that I said that. They said that I said, I'm going to wear your organs as chains and I'm going to murder all of you. Like, it's crazy even, it's crazy even saying, like, me hearing this, like, that I did this. Like, this is, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I'm fighting them all. I'm fighting them all. There's, like, eight people. So, and, you know, I... At this point, I got, like, crackhead strength. I got, like, demon strength. I'm just full psychotic mode. So they all have to get me. All eight people, they jump on top of me. They duct tape my arms behind my back. They duct tape my feet together. And they put duct tape over my mouth. They pick me up. And they carry me upstairs. And they carry me into this, into this closet. They turn off the light. It's pitch black. And they close the door. Keep in mind, all of this, all of this story has been related to me so far. But at this moment, I, I don't know how long they left me in the closet. They said I was in, in the closet for like an hour. But they said that they came back and when they turned on the light, I remember like that's like me coming back and like, and keep in mind, we're only like six hours into the trip. So we are all still fully tripping balls, bro. So they come in, they turn on the light, and I remember 
Keep in mind, I don't remember anything that happened before this. So when they turn on the light, all I know is I'm in this closet. I'm tripping balls. There's duct tape over my mouth. There's duct tape. My arms are duct tape behind my back and my legs are duct tape. And I'm just looking at them and I'm like, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what did I get myself into? Like, this is like one of those, this is like one of those horror movie moments where like, you know, the dude like takes too much Xanax and blacks out and then he wakes up and he murdered someone. Like, this is exactly what I felt like. So I'm all duct taped up and they come, they come get me, they pick me up, they take me downstairs. They set me down on the ground. And then the one girl, she's like, you know, and, and keep like, I don't, you know, I, I, I hold no grudges against any of these people. Like I completely understand. Like I freaked out. They freaked out this. We are all on acid. This is a, this is the worst. This is a terrible situation. So I don't blame them for anything that happened. But I remember the girl, she was like, like, I don't know what she was thinking in her head, but she's like, oh, she's like, she's all, she's all pumped up and amped up. She's like, she's like, we need to knock him out. We need to knock this guy out. So I'm laying on the, I'm sitting on the floor, duct taped up with duct tape over my mouth, tripping balls, just got out of the closet that they picked me out from. And then she comes up to me and she's like, we need to knock him out. And she punches me as hard as she can in my fucking face. And I'm like, you know, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I just woke up in this closet. I'm all duct tape up. Now these people are taking me out and they're punching me in the face. I'm like, what the fuck is going on right now? I'm like, what is even ha like, I'm, like, I'm thinking like, I'm going to die. Like, I'm for sure. Like, this is how I die. Like I was seeing, I'm like, this is for sure how I'm going to end up dead. So eventually like everything, you know, they punch me in the face. It calms down. They lay me on, they lay me down on the couch, like stomach first, face first. And they're like, all right, we, th we think he's good. We think he's calmed down. So they get a knife. They cut the tape off my arms. They cut the tape off my feet and they remove the duct tape from my mouth. And keep in mind, like I said, I am still in like shock. I'm like, what in the fuck is happening right now? Like, what the fuck is going on? So I go, we're in the living room. I walk to the middle of the living room and, you know, I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm having, you know, you already know. So I sit down in the middle of the floor and I start meditating because I'm just like, I just need to breathe. I just need to relax. I just need to get back to my, just, just. I just need to focus, man. So I sit down and I'm meditating and far off in the distance, I see this outline of the Buddha, but the outline is made of rainbows. And I, every breath I take, it gets closer and closer. I'm breathing in and then this Buddha, this Buddha rainbow outline, it fully engulfs my vision. I'm shot into this like rainbow rainbow tunnel and at this point I leave my body again and I like I, I I'm not there I'm not in my body and so while I'm gone they said that I stood up I walked towards Daniel and keep in mind I had already punched Daniel in the face so they're like you know they're already apprehensive they're like okay is he gonna like punch him in the face again like you know like what's gonna happen so I walk towards Daniel and then to my right is this giant, like solid, like five foot solid glass window that leads to the backyard. They said, I stop right before Daniel and I run and I fucking football dive through this solid glass window. Psh, the glass shatters. I roll onto the ground. I get up. I run. I hop over the wall. Everyone's screaming. They're like, what the fuck? You know, what the fuck just happened? Blah. I'm running down the street. It's like one in the morning. Everyone starts coming out there, start chasing after me. They say, I'm running down the street as fast as I can. I'm just running, I'm running. And eventually they said, I stopped and I turned back and I looked at them and I started walking towards them and I started running again. And then eventually I just like, like I, I fell down to my knees and I collapsed and I collapsed on my face. And then I rem and I remember coming back to this. Like I said, like when I sat down to meditate in the room, yeah, that's when the, when I saw the rainbow Buddha, I left my body and then my body, that's, that's when it jumped through the window and it ran through the streets. And then when it laid down, that's when like I came back to my body. Sorry, it's just a crazy story to even, even me rethinking about it right now. And I remember coming back and I remember I wake up, I open my eyes 
You know, I get up, I look, there's blood all over, blood and glass all over my hands because I just jumped through this fucking window. I'm, I'm bleeding everywhere. There's glass, there's a street. I'm getting up, I look around, I look behind me. There's all these people chasing me. My heart's beating like, I don't even, you know, I don't even know, like, at, at the, I'm so, I'm so fucked up. Like, I don't even know who these people are. They're chasing me. Like, I look at the blood on my hands and I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, did I just murder someone or like, what happened? So I get up and I start running again. I hop over the spiked fence. At that point, like, they can't catch up to me. So they all run back to the house. They get in the truck. They, they pull up to the truck. Eventually, they, eventually I stop. Like, I remember, like, I remember, oh yeah, like, I'm having a bad trip. Like, I'm on acid. Like, I need to... Like, those are my friends. So I stop, and I start walking towards, and I just walk back to them. And I just fall into their arms, and they pick me up, and they carry me. And then the other homies, they pull up with the truck, and they put me in the truck. And they drive me back to the house. You know, and they're just like, oh my, like, Elliot, are you okay? Like, what's happened? Like, like blah, blah. Like, I'm, I'm finally starting to come back to normal. And they lay me down in the living room. They call my mom. They're like, oh my, you know... Elliot freaked out, like he had a bad acid trip, like he jumped through the window, like, you know, because you hear those horror stories about people who have a bad acid trip and they never come back, you know, if like, if you're predisposed to schizophrenia and then, and then it's like you take a psychedelic and it really opens and then, and then you, it like shoots you into that. They were like, we don't know if Elliot's going to come back. Like, we don't know what happened. And so they call my mom and my mom gets there and I'm speaking gibberish the whole time. Like, I'm like, like, I'm, like, halfway there, but I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm looking at Daniel. I'm like, yo, I'm, like, I'm, like, talking about people that don't exist. My mom gets there, and she's wearing this jacket that looks just like Michael Jackson's jacket. So, I remember I look at my mom, and I'm like, Michael Jackson? I mean, it's just funny stuff, but it's it's funny, and it's serious at the same time. And so, eventually, you know, she gets there. She takes me home. I wake up the next morning, and everything's, you know, it's not fine, but... You know, they're just like, we're, ha we're happy. We're, we're happy that you are back, back to normal and that you didn't fucking go fully insane. And, and what I wanted to tell you guys before, like I said, like when I would leave my body, like I remembered parts of leaving my body. Like I remember when I first left, like when we were on the couch, like I started doing that and I started freaking out. I started screaming and I was like, Daniel, I'm gonna punch you in the face. I remember when I left my body, I remember at the time it was my ex-girlfriend. And so I leave my body right after I'm in this basement and I wake up and I'm in this white bed and it's, it's surrounded by this field of white flowers. Like it's literally like the, the ultimate, the ultimate depiction of heaven, like just the beautiful white, pure scenery. Everything is so pure and calm and graceful and the sun is perfectly white, and every, it's just white flowers and a white bed, and I look over, and at the time, it's my girlfriend, and I don't, you know, obviously, like, I feel like this is probably God, or, or whatever entity it was, was taking the most, was taking the form of whatever was most comfortable to me, so I look over, and it's my girlfriend at the time, and she's like, Elliot, she's like, everything's gonna be okay, I just need you to calm down, all you need to do is calm down and everything's going to be okay. And she's stroking my face and stroking my face. And then the next thing I like, I wake, like I wake up and I remember there's like hands all over me. Like, like I feel like, like at this point I don't like in, in that heaven realm, like I had of my body, like I saw me and I saw my girlfriend in the bed. But in this one, it was like, it was like my soul. It was like, I didn't have a body. And it's like, I just felt all these hands but I felt the hands and I saw them at the same time. And it started as one handprint and one handprint and then boom, 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 boom. And they'd all, and they all covered my body and each of these hands were glowing white. And it was like, they were raising me up and they were like, they were like protecting me and saving me. And I remember opening my eyes and that's when I, and that's when I woke up in the, in the living room when they cut the tape off my hands. And I remember seeing Daniel's mom was there and it was like, I was being, it was it gave me flashbacks of when I was born, like in the hospital, like I saw it's like Daniel's mom was like a nurse or like a doctor. And it was like, I was coming out of the womb and you heard the beep, 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 beep of the machine. And they're like, Oh, everything's going to be okay. And I could feel, I could feel the water, like the cool, the cooled water and blood on my face. And then I felt something like, it felt like a hook or a knife, like go on the back of my head and go like, 
and it felt as if someone ripped like like all like they'd ripped my whole the whole face off of my skull that's exactly what it felt like it was just for a split second it was like and I heard the noise and everything just like that and and like ripped the skin off my skull and then it's like I woke up in the living room and then like I said you know that's what led into me meditating and then blacking out and then jumping through the window and I mean that's the whole story man I mean Sorry to drop such a fucking heavy story on you guys, but I mean, this is, this is really how bad shit can go. And this is, this is why you really should prepare yourself for psychedelics. Cause I don't just, I don't, I don't just tell you this shit like, oh my God, like, oh no, be safe. And uh, like, no, like really like respect the plants, respect the medicine, respect the drugs. Because like I said, at the beginning of the video, they can take you to heaven. They can show you God. They can show you the most infinite joy and peace imaginable, but also they can take you to the darkest, deepest, most evil, terrible places of psyche and hell that you will never, ever want to visit. And thank God there were people there to keep everyone safe because literally like they said, they're like, they were like, they said that I was like, oh, I'm going to murder all of you. I'm going to kill all of you. Thank God there were so many people there to hold me down and duct tape me up like the situation ended up as best as it could. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's the trip report. I mean, I know this was a fucking crazy story to tell you guys. But, uh, really, like, when I tell you set and setting matter, make sure you're in a good mindset, I really mean it. Because I never want any of you guys to go through what I went through. I want you guys to experience the joys and the, and the magic of psychedelics and the psychedelic realm and to meet angels and entities. I want you to experience all of that. And you will have a bad trip at some point. But, it, but I just, you know, you will have a bad trip at some point. But hopefully you can minimize it because you do not want to have a psychotic breakdown like me. You do not want to be the guy that punched his friend in the face threatened to murder his whole family jumps through a fucking window you know what i'm saying don't get me wrong like i don't regret the trip it it really shook me to the core and it showed me like you don't know shit you don't know what you're doing you really need to you really need to get a handle on yourself and set yourself straight and everything worked out fine as possible and ever since then everything's been good i make sure to take everything slow and steady Make sure to be prepared, but I just wanted to share that with you guys. If, Like I was saying in the earlier Salvia trip, there's so much misinformation and there's so much bad stereotypes because people go into trips unprepared. And me, I was one of those guys. In this trip, I thought I was so smart. I was like, oh yeah, I've done acid a million times. I'll be good. Da, da, da. And everyone thinks that until you have the bad trip. And look what happened to me, bro. So everything ended up well. I don't regret the trip because it, it taught me more than you could possibly know. Like that is some reality shattering shit. But um, that's the end of my trip report, guys. Uh, stay safe. Have fun. If you've had any bad trips, uh, share them in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one.